The Holy Gospel according to the 10th chapter of Mark. Glory to you, Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lorded over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, to give his life a ransom for many. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated. What is it you want me to do for you? Grace and peace from God our Father in heaven and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. What do you see when you look in a mirror? How often have you been asked that? What do you see? What is that reflection coming back at you from the mirror? I believe that's what this gospel reading is about this morning. It's our reflection, who we see when we look. This morning I saw a man with white hair, lots of it, and bags under his eyes, for it was still early in the morning. There are times that I see somebody that God has called to do the will of God, as best that he can. Sometimes I see a husband and a father. Sometimes I see a man who struggles with doubt. So what do you see when you look into the mirror? I think the apostles James and John saw greatness. If they were to look in the mirror that day, they would have said, Boy, I am great. So let's trot off to Jesus and say, we want to sit at your right-hand side because we are that good. Jesus was not having anything to do with that. He talks about the cup of which he drinks, the baptism with which he was baptized, They didn't understand a single word of what Jesus was saying. Jesus finally said, it is not up to me. You can be baptized, you can drink of the same cup, but it's not up to me where you will sit in your heavenly home. Jesus was teaching once again. And I'm not sure that the disciples heard the words once again. I had this nice little sermon written for today, but this week has yielded a lot of thoughts in my mind, a lot of what's going on in life. How many times do we think that we are great, like James and John did? 
How many times do we pat ourselves on the back for things that we have done? Or on the other extreme, how many times do we put ourselves down and we don't like what we see when we look at our reflection? How many times do we question and struggle and have that doubt of who this person is that is in the mirror? The disciples were much like we are. They struggled, and each time they had a chance to see something they thought Jesus wanted to see, they grasped hold of it. How many times do we try to do the same thing? To portray something so that God will say, well done, my child. How many times do we want to hear the words Jesus say, what do you want me to do now for you? 2011, I did a chaplaincy rotation. I probably talked a little bit about it before. And I thought it was going to be a piece of cake because I'm going to be a pastor. Good for me. It must be okay. It must be an easy thing to do to talk to people in the hospital setting. And because of my age, they gave me a little bit more of advanced chaplaincy rotation. I was placed into trauma. I was placed into the ER and the ICU units. While my colleagues, much younger than I am, were placed on the generic floors. How many times when I served as the chaplain and the things that I saw and the things that I witnessed. Part of your rotation is to write down every single thing you said to a patient, everything you said to a family member, everything you saw in trauma or ER, and then we come together as a group and we talk about it and then we break it down and they break you down. Slowly, over 10 weeks' time, that mirror, that reflection you see, that greatness you think we are, is slowly broken down for all of us who went through that rotation. And in the last three weeks, it flip-flops suddenly and we start to rebuild. Not so that we say we are great, but to say to look in the mirror and say, this is who God called us to be. What do you want Jesus to do for you now? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Because Jesus Christ has already done it. Jesus has done it through the cross, his suffering and death, his exit from a dark damp cave he has done it for us already so what is he asking us to do in his words in our gospel this morning brothers and sisters here you are doing it this is the why of stewardship really it is to break ourselves down to follow the mission of God to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ this is what the purpose is of the mission of God to break us down so we do what God has called us to do. This church does it. Our congregation is active in the outreach in our community. Take a look at what we do. Listen to others talk about the ministries they're involved in. We are children of God called by Him to do and we at First English do. This is the why of stewardship. We don't need to ask Jesus for help. We already know what to do. I was all set to, to, to talk about the, the, what we can do and what we should be doing. And, but I woke up this morning and said, we are all there. But it doesn't mean we're supposed to stop. It doesn't mean we're supposed to slow down. 
it means that we still come together to do the work that God has called us to do. That is all part of the grand scheme. It's a part of why we are called church. The reason that we claim ourselves to be children of God, it is the mission of God. Jesus asked the disciples, what is it do you want me to do? They couldn't respond because there was no response needed. Jesus is doing the same thing for us today. So let us go back to where we're called to be. Children of our Heavenly Father. United as one body of Christ. Called for one reason and one reason only. To be the witnesses to the mission that was started so long ago. To proclaim the message that we often proclaim. Why? Because he is so good. So good all the time. All the time, God is good. Amen.